Hey there, welcome back. In this video, we're going to do a walkthrough of LeetCode 2905. This is one of those problems where you can come up with a working solution with a lot of code, but I'll show you how a bit of planning and careful considerations can cut down on our code burden, which is an important skill for software engineering and competitive programming. So here's our problem. We're given an array nums and integers index difference and value difference. Our goal is to find indices i and j in nums that satisfy the following conditions, where the absolute value of i and j is at least as large as index difference, and the absolute value of the difference between the values associated with indices i and j is at least value difference. If any such indices exist, then we return those indices. Otherwise, we return negative 1, negative 1. So the first thing we should note is that if the difference between the maximum and minimum values of the given array are less than value difference, then we return negative one, negative one, since the difference between the max and min is going to be the maximum possible difference. Then one slippery slope we might go down is applying the same logic to an arbitrary subarray within the given nums array. This is convenient since we could then do a one pass solution, keeping track of the running maximum and minimum value we've seen so far and checking the difference between them. But if you went down this path, you probably realize pretty quickly that this won't really work because of our index difference constraint. You can only return these indices if they're at least index difference apart, and this is really getting at the crux of the problem. So as a result of that, you might be then tempted to do a binary search-based approach. And this actually works if you're careful you'd keep track of values that are at least index difference away and just search for a value that satisfies our value constraint. But here's why that's actually not really appropriate for this kind of question. The main reason is that we're allowed to return any set of indices that work. Binary search is great when you're trying to find exact values, like if our task instead was to find the minimum valued indices that satisfied the conditions in this problem. But since we can return any set of indices that work, we don't care about exact values, and therefore we don't care about binary search. So let's revisit our approach about looking at the maximum and minimum values, and let's refine the approach so that we don't get trumped by the index difference constraint. Here's what we'll do. We'll start iterating in our array from left to right, starting at index, index difference, and we'll only look at indices to the left of the current index. And then we'll always look at current index minus index difference and keep track of the minimum and maximum values we've seen so far. We'll then compare the current value to the running minimum or maximum and see if we can return a result. So you may be wondering how this addresses our index difference constraint that we brought up earlier. Recall that we previously said that we cannot just look at the maximum and min of any arbitrary subarray and return those indices. And it looks like I just lied to you, doesn't it? Aren't we doing what I just said we can't do? Well, I have two answers for you. The first is that this algorithm does not op operate on arbitrary subarrays. It operates on very specifically curated subarrays that allow us to satisfy the index difference condition. Let me walk through an example with you. So for example, let's say that index difference is equal to four and value difference is equal to four. On the first loop, we'll look at indices 0 and 4, and our min value will be set to 1, and max value will be set to 3. On the next loop, we'll look at indices 1 and 5, and we don't update our min or max value. Then we look at indices 2 and 6, at which point we're able to say that our maximum is at index 6, and the value at index 6 is 5. 5 minus the minimum is 5 minus 1, which is greater than or equal to 4. Notice that the value that carried over between iterations was this zero index. At this point in our algorithm, the only values that will get carried over between iterations are min or max values that came from indices with index less than two. So if that value came from an index j, where j is less than i minus index difference, then that means that index difference is less than i minus j, and therefore i minus j is greater than index difference. So therefore, that satisfies our problem constraint. The second answer I have is that I said we can't take the difference between the maximum and minimum of any arbitrary subarray. That is still true here. Notice that in our pseudocode, we're keeping track of the running min and max, but we're taking the difference between the current element 
and the running min and max, that's a crucial difference. If you take the difference between the running min and max, you'll still run into the problem I described earlier, where there is no guarantee that the running min and max are at least index difference apart. Here, we only have a guarantee that the current element and the running min and max are at least index difference apart, since we're calculating the min and max by only looking at elements to the left of the current element by at least index difference units. Okay, so now we have a framework for our algorithm. Let's jump into the code. Firstly, let's define our min and max indices. We don't need to define min and max values since we can always look those up by using the nums array and our indices. Then, We'll iterate through our array beginning at index difference and we'll keep track of the running minimum and maximum by looking at elements only to the left of the current element. Finally, we'll compare the current element to the running minimum and maximum and return the relevant indices if we found them. Otherwise, we return negative one, negative one. Yep, and that's how you do this problem without resorting to complicated binary search code or funky data structures. If you found this helpful, please like, comment, and subscribe. Thanks, and I'll see you in the next video.